On this C20 controller, we have control of a video hub, also an ATEM switcher. That's not relevant in this case. We have state buttons, shift level buttons, and encoders. But for the video hub routing, we have uh, sources for every one of these buttons routed to output number one, and that's a fixed output. Let's look at the configuration of those buttons. It's obvious that output number one is selected. I want that to be more flexible. So if we look at the bottom of the list, we find something called memory A, B, C, and D, and also memory A, A, and A, R, B, B. Those are called memory groups. Let's first look at memory A, because this is a really good example of what memories are, and that's the topic of this video. So memories are, well, a memory cell that can contain a value across multiple actions in the system. And as I select memory A instead of output 1, it means that the output we are routing to will be defined by memory A. So it's a variable in the memory that we can now force to a given value. So far so good, the buttons are now configured. What I would like to do for selecting the value of memory A is to use encoder number 2, which is available. So I click this one. And then we choose the system action called memory. This can be selected for buttons as well, but in this case we select it for the encoder and we set it to, let's say, 6. So uh, when we put a number, it will become the upper limit of how far this encoder goes. Let's take a look at the other actions. These would um, relate to buttons only. And this one persists, that's interesting, because it means that the value will get stored in memory. So whenever we boot the controller again, it will keep or remember that value and use it again. So let's save these settings and download the new firmware. So now the new firmware is written to the device and we'll see it boot up. We also see that the output source is currently unavailable. And that makes sense because in memory A, the value zero is recorded at this point in time. We didn't use it yet. But as I turn this knob, you see now memory A is uh, at the value one, now two, three, four, five, six. And then as I continue to turn, you see it goes back to zero. So it cycles from zero up to six. And what you see for the displays of these buttons is that the title line changes to the name of the output. And if you uh, keep your eye on the Video Hub control software that are also on the screen right now, you can confirm that these labels are coming out of the Video Hub. Let's try to route something to the output called write M. That would be the second one. So as I press this button, you see it is actually executing routes to this output. And now output number three, we are executing routes to that output. So it works as expected. And when we reboot the controller, the value three is the one that will be set when it boots. So going back to the configuration of the encoder from memory, I would like to introduce cycle memory. That's a different way of... Um, setting values in a memory. And uh, in this case, we can select some ranges. So let's try this out. We select the range from one up to four, and then continue from eight up to uh, nine maybe. And then we add 11. So we should now have an encoder that will bring you us through one, two, three, four, eight, nine, then 11. And back, we can again, we can set the persist function so that it stays in memory to whenever we are done. We save the settings and recompile the firmware. So while it's recompiling, um, I may want to take a chance to introduce um, the document for the system actions. This has been brought up before, but just to make sure that we don't miss it, how memory and cycle memory works will be documented right here. So you can see for pulse inputs, 
it will cycle through values up to the selected value, which is exactly what we experienced. And for cycle memory, it will cycle through values in the range lineup. You also get the whole story about what memories are and how it works and what the persist flag means, etc. And you can see what happens if instead we assign memory selection to a button where the toggle and the hold down cycle up and down and so forth are active. But in this video, we'll just stick to what the memories mean and how they uh, are often used in relation to um, um, the devices. So uh, we have an emergency situation here, an error occurred during firmware upload. Uh, when this happens, you need to power cycle the controller. Uh, in this case, I'll just pull out the ethernet plug and put it in again because it's PoE powered. So uh, now the controller is ready again. We see the USB port is, is uh, detected and I check for updates. In this case, it's probably gonna time out because since we had an error occur, we have a false firmware on the device at the moment. So we need to wait until it times out and then it will tell us what to do. And in this case, we will just accept it. So we need to put this intermediate software on the device and that will bring us back into the game. There we go. So now it's exciting to see how the memory works. First of all, yes, memory A is at the value three when we boot. When we rotate the encoder, we see it's cycling through. So memory one, two, three, four, eight, nine, eleven, one, two, three, four. If I go the other way, one, eleven, nine, eight, three, four, two, one, blah, blah, blah. And we also see the reflection down here. So that works as well. So you may think, is this really the best way to select the output? First of all, the uh, label we see for the encoder was memory A. Could that be something different? And in fact, it could by just the means we have right here because we can substitute the label for the memory encoder. But in this video, I will uh, show you how memories are sometimes possible to set by a function related uh, to the device we are controlling. So in the case of the video hub, we have an action called output select and output select will uh, work with the memory, though in this case with the memory group, group AA, uh, but that just for now, uh, think about memory group AA as a place where we store values as well for the output. So uh, it's not as advanced as the cycle memory where we could exclude certain values, but at least we can go let's say up to output number 10. The clear all parameter is not relevant in this case because um, it's, it's for buttons basically. This is uh, something you would see in the documentation for the video hub um, device call. And where is that documentation anyway? Well, um, if we just save these settings, I'll show you because if we go to the device course uh, in the description of the video hub and the ATEM device call, there's a link to the video hub manual. So we could just click this link and go watch what is said about the output select function. So, uh, and that actually refers us back to the memory groups. So if we um, go to the, um, the system action documentation, we can find the memory group descriptions. I think it's in the back of the document. And uh, here it will be explained what memory groups are because that function, the output select is basically a copy of this one, except that we get a better labeling uh, uh, on the device. So now um, let's try to set it up, uh, basically uh, see how it works. It is set up for the encoder. It is changing this memory location, but we also have since now it's memory AA, we need to uh, use that memory instead for these buttons. So I just quickly have to change that value here. Otherwise it is not going to work. I think it's for obvious reasons it's not going to work. I don't know about you. So uh, I could s just quickly say about group memories, the memory AA and, and BB, they can contain multiple values. So this would allow me to um, send a route to just uh, more than one output for, it could be up to 10 outputs actually. But here it's just one output and we'll check for updates and write a new firmware to the device. So firmware is almost written now and 
there we go. We should see a reboot of the controller. And now the difference, as you see, is that the label for the encoder will be output. So as I turn this knob, we see the label of the actual output selected. The, the, the label we see in the title line here is shown as the value for the encoder, which is a nice touch and very useful, of course. So uh, you'll find this once in a while. You also find it in the ATEM library, for instance, where you can select cameras by um, a, a similar function that will give you the names of the inputs from the ATEM switch as camera labels instead of just a number.